I'm going to talk today about batteries uh, in the United Kingdom. So how a battery can save you money, and that's the main benefit of using a hybrid inverter as opposed to what they call string inverter. Well, first of all, I get the definition of string inverter. String actually refers to a series of solar panels, um, and it's an Americanism. We call it in Britain a series. In the United States, they call it string, and that's where it relates to. So string inverters are a grid-tied inverter. So the panel, solar panels, the photovoltaic cells, are connected to an inverter. The inverter is then connected to the mains, and the power is fed from the PV cells into the mains. The, if you have an export tariff, and then if you produce more power than you're using, then often your meter will go backwards and you'll be credited for that, for that money. Many countries, like for example, Hong Kong, where I'm based, uh, you get a huge amount of money for your export tariff. Uh, in some countries, like sort of UK, and I think now Australia, it's virtually gone, and you don't get anything uh, or, or very little for export. So you don't want to export it because you've put your fantastic system in, you're gonna generate electricity, and why do you want to give it away for free? So on a traditional system in the UK, you fit a solar panel, you put an inverter, and it's relatively cheap. The solar, sh solar uh, sun shines on the solar panels, produce electricity. If you're in during the daytime, so the electricity is typically produced between in the morning between 10 a.m. and say 4 p.m., and during that, pe that period, if you're at home, then you may have the benefits of using free electricity to run your washing machine and your TV. But most people are, are at work, or certainly during the day, the, the demand is low. Um, so the, it, the, the system is flawed. So people say, well, well done, we've got to save the electricity. So to save the electricity, you need a battery. Uh, it's the easiest way. There's lots of other techniques coming out, but they're more for large scale. But for domestic, we have a battery. Traditionally, we used to use lead acid batteries, and then we moved to AGM batteries. And nowadays, most batteries for domestic are lithium, and they, they use lithium phosphate, life PO4. Um, batteries do last a long time, these lithium batteries, so which is one of the, one of the benefits. So, a hybrid inverter can operate in two ways. One, it can operate when the sun is shining. It can, you can use electricity what you're using, but the balance of the electricity rather than waste it and it just goes into the abyss it then saves into the batteries and at night time you can use those that power it can how it connects the mains there's two different ways but i will discuss that in this video because it's we talk about ours is a grid uh, ac coupled or we have a load output and different things but for now just basically the electricity is stored in the battery and it can be used that's the first usage but there is another usage because you don't necessarily need solar panels Many years ago, and this is still very much alive and kicking, people used to use storage heaters. A storage heater would operate at nighttime between 12 o'clock typically and say six in the morning. You have cheap electricity, they called it Comedy 7. Comedy 7 still exists, very much so. And during that time, the electricity price is much, much cheaper than the regular electricity. And so the heaters would store the energy in a, into bricks, into these bricks and during the daytime, it release it. So you use the cheap electricity to heat your house. Um, and this was been, this been around a long, long time. Storage heaters used to be huge things, now they're smaller, but storage heaters in a Comedy 7 is still very much alive. So people say, well, hold on a second. Why do the electricity companies do it cheap? Simple, because you know, when you've got, and I use an example, a nuclear power station and the turbine is whizzing around, you can't switch it off at night. It's still going to produce electricity. It's still going to run the turbines and that, that electricity is, is lost. So you have a supply and demand thing. And at the night time, the certain time, the demand is very low. So electricity companies want to sell that power much cheaper. The price you get for that power depends pretty much on the tariffs that you're on. But you certainly can get two tariffs. You can get cheap electricity tariff and you can get a regular electricity tariff. tariff. Typically, the cheap tariff is 25% or less than the regular tariff. So if a regular tariff is 20p a kilowatt hour, the cheap tariff may be 5p a kilowatt hour. We want to use the cheap electricity. We can use that and we can charge a battery and we can save it and during the, day, during the evening or daytime or whatever we want to use it, we can take a benefit of that cheap electricity. Now, it, the battery, depends on how much power you use. So of course, 
if you if you're using more power then you need a bigger battery and um, if you're using less power than the battery size it makes a difference but often people once they realize they're using and they've got this benefit then you're psychological you you'll tend to use the power you've got in your battery anyway you're going to save power and most of the examples where we fitted these systems people typically can save a lot of electricity a huge amount we've seen savings as much as 75 percent on some trials so yes it does work absolutely work there is another system available in the uk and they call it power trading where people buy and sell electricity i as an engineer i i think there's a, there's a flaw in it um, and one of the flaws is lithium battery has an amount of cycles, a number of cycles, a defined number of cycles, and the battery will wear out. Um, typically, um, a cheaper lithium battery may be 2,000 cycles. If you go to the best, best, best lithium battery, something like there's, there's a company that's called Catel, Catel Cells, and these are probably, in my mind, these are the best, and these run up to six or 7,000 cycles. But this is fine because if you're charging and discharging once a day and you're just using the cheap electricity then the battery's going to last you a long time 20 years um even though we say it's a five year five or ten year warranty this thing's going to last you 20 years it's going to last a long time but some people use this power trading and I, this is the thing i personally can't get my head around it's where you're buying the electricity and selling it constantly all of the time so you buy sell buy sell and it's up and down so you're constantly charging and discharging your batteries. But the bit I can't get my head, because batteries have a finite number of cycles, if you're gonna buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell, then, then surely you're gonna wear the battery out very quickly. And the cost of the battery is quite expensive. So I don't really get that part of the, of the, the thing, this, this energy thing. I don't understand why because the, you, you, the saving you're going to make, you're going to lose very quickly. Whereas I think having a simple system that can buy electricity off peak and use it when it's on peak, and you can go to any electricity provider and you can look at and negotiate the best deals yourself. You can go anywhere because there's lots of providers. Most of the providers do it. And if you go onto one of the compare the market sites, you can do that. You're not tied into what any one can, um, provider utility. You can go to any utility and you say, well, they're, they're, they're four peak, kilowatt hour off peak, and they're whatever. There's, there's deals, and these deals will get more and more. And I'm sure some of the utilities will start to do better deals as the time goes on. And that's the benefit. You know, the real benefit. Using it with solar and use the off peak electricity is a double benefit. And obviously, the nice thing about using with the hybrid inverter is you can upgrade, you can upgrade, you can have more and more batteries as you go on. Um, it, you're not limited. You are to a certain extent, but you're pretty much unlimited. And you, you can expand, so you can start off with a small system and you can grow it and grow it and grow it. And sure, yes, you will save money. No doubt you will save money because you're buying cheap. It, it, it's common sense, buy cheap, use when it's expensive, simple as. Um, as I say, there are lots and lots of things, but use it with the solar is nice. Solar panels in the UK don't generate a massive amount of power um people will argue differently and i know there's lots of legal actions going on there's lots of sort of people selling things you know we have what we call a solar index in the world and it's a sun hour uh, uh for example in australia the sun hours maybe five six some parts of australia seven and that means if you put a 1000 watt array you can get 5000 6000 7000 watts if you put a 5000 watt array you're gonna get 25000 watts the problem in the UK is you put a five kilowatt array, 5,000 watt array, and most of the UK has a sun rating of one. Um, realistic, you might even get 0.5, half. But let's say we get one and we put a 5,000 watt array up, you're going to get 5,000 watts of power. That's it. Um, you put the same array in Australia, you're going to get between 25 and 35,000 watts of power. So it's a huge difference. So you have to weigh up the costs. Solar panels can last a very long time. Um, maybe 25 years and so you say well it's probably worth it but you've got to make sure you keep them clean uh clean them regularly uh, maybe once a year whatever it's got a roof so you've got that side of it and any maintenance side of it um but they will work of course they'll help uh, every bit helps 
but don't expect these amazing results of a set of solar panels in certain parts of the world. Um, South Africa, great, they got five. We, I've seen it myself and, and on data loggers and five, six sun hours, it's fantastic in South Africa. No problem, solar works. Um, I, I just could jump, I'm jumping around a little bit. I, I read recently in um, South Australia, um, they've got issues because it's solar is so good some days they're getting 93 or 95 percent of the entire power for the entire state is provided from solar it's a problem though because these solars are, are not battery based as soon as it, the cloud comes over it stops dead it can stop completely dead then the utility is going to get hit with this huge power surge it's a massive stabilization problem they've got so they're trying to sort of limit the amount of solar you can put on and looking at batteries and look at stabilization because this is going to be a problem for the utilities is stabilization of the power especially when more systems come on and also south africa is going to get the same issue they're going to have power stabilization because if you imagine a lot of people and these shopping malls with these huge on grid not battery systems straight on grid systems and suddenly a cloud comes across or something yeah, uh, over 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 the array, and suddenly the power is gone, and you might be generating hundreds and hundreds of megawatt of power, and suddenly that megawatt power is gone, and you've got to suddenly instantly pull that off the grid, and wow, the grid's gonna wow, it's gonna it, 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 this is gonna pop fuses and all sorts of things. So having to look at stabilization stuff. So batteries will become the future without a doubt. So you know, thanks for watching. Um, I'll try and do some more videos later.